exactly. All right, here we are at, um, where are we, stage seven? Yeah. And we have two guys off the front today, two guys who've been in most every stage breakaway, certainly yesterday. Kofidis Ryder, who is um, Rossetti, forgetting the first name immediately, of course. But anyway, he's been to his first tour. He was actually, I believe, in the first painting I did of this stage. So they are coming up on the last climb of today's stage, although very limited climbing today, all Cat 3 and Cat 4 climbs. So I like that they call it a flat stage, even though there's a couple of categorized climbs in it. But also all of the climbs are early. So here we are at the last climb, and there's still almost 70 miles yet to race. So getting the two riders laid in now. And uh, so I've sort of picked this image because I wanted to show the um, this, the thing I'm drawing now, and my words have left me. But the banner across the road marking the climb, the riders can really, if needs be, judge their sprint. Although today these two guys have split the climbs thus far, split the points. Neither has any real expectation of being taking over the polka dot jersey. I think between them they have, well, today they got a number of points because they're the only two out here. But they don't have any real numbers of points in the KOM competition to mean anything. So they haven't competed against each other in trying to acquire points, but instead have shared the cash bonuses. And my understanding is any prize monies that riders win along the course of the tour are shared equally amongst the team, and I don't know if that's riders only or if it also includes all the support members of the team. But nevertheless, they are shared. It's not like if you get the King of the Mountains points and the purse that goes with it, you get to keep it. After all, this is a team sport, so it seems like all the benefits should be shared equally amongst the team. Only fair, right? We're just getting the last of the spectators now cheering these guys on as they approach this the top of this coal. I have my notes on what, where they are, but I'm not going to take the time to look that up. So I am painting these every day, every stage, as you've seen. I hope you will continue to watch, that if you like what you're seeing, you will give a thumbs up to the video, as well as subscribe. I would truly appreciate it. After I do all this work, I do write about each stage, share all of the watercolors on my um, blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. I hope you'll give a check out to that as well. And all of the work also is for sale, so on the blog posts, you can follow the direct link through to each, print, each painting. It'll take you to my website where you can purchase the work if you feel so inclined. All this points along the way. Today is the 12th, 
Got to go to 7-Eleven yesterday. It wasn't until the end of the day when I realized. And then it was too late. For those who don't live in the States or deal with 7-Eleven, they uh, give away free Slurpees on the day of the year that bears their name. All right, so that's the color. Doesn't look like there's much yellow is again where I start always putting in the starting with the lightest of the warm colors and working my way through the warms yellows to reds lightest to darkest and then through the cool colors and you know occasionally as you may have noticed I'll miss to come back but still generally speaking doing that in that color succession so as to help keep the colors from getting polluted from mixing and thus creating browns and grays. So now creating a little flesh tone here out of yellows and reds. And I know it's a little silly, but I have found that mixing that orange rather than using their orange gives me a better flesh tone more controlled flesh tone. Um, uh, like I don't work, even with these, don't work all the way to the edge. And that is because I had a drawing instructor once tell me, and his point was that you should use all of your paper. Don't make a piece of artwork in the middle of the page and don't look at your edges. But he told me, Stuart Campbell had told me that the first four lines of your image, your painting, your drawing in this case, was um, the four edges of the paper. And from that moment on, I never worked to the edge of the paper again, because I'll be damned if somebody was making my first four lines. And so I work the same way with color. I don't want somebody else deciding what my colors are. So I always mix variants of all of the colors, even this red, adding just a touch. Now in that case, it was in my mixing pan, but adding a little bit of variant, a little bit of pink or vermilion, a little bit of orange, but always owning my colors. So that's through the warm colors. And now we're switched to cool. I'm going to start with this again, the brightest, the lightest. I thought of something else I wanted to say and it disappeared when I was finishing another point. Oh well, perhaps it'll come back. So the bright greens. Can't figure out what it was. Now I am going to skip the background greens right now. Oh, that's what it was about. So I haven't mentioned so the way my palette is arranged. So of course these colors are all sort of again warms and lights to the top, cools and darks to the bottom. And you can see that there's a different trays for um, and a hair off the brush. Um, different little mixing areas so that again I'm keeping the colors clean. I'm always paying attention to what is influencing each color, the mixing, so that I'm not trying to mix a warm color and then mix a cool color next to it. And I've even gotten so far as to have two different greens. So these are the cooler, more mixed greens for the foliage. And these are the bright greens for the Dago colors of the riding kits and such. Now, also, you can't see what I'm working from, but I am watching the race and then seeing something I feel helps tell the story of the race, or in this case, it's, well, this is both the story of the race, but it also has to be visually interesting. Anytime I teach classes or whatnot, I remind people that 
The viewer of your artwork is never going to see your source material, what you painted from, your still life, your, you know, in this case, the video images that I'm working from. No one's ever going to see that. So what's most important is what's on your page. Does that look right? Does that look interesting? Is that the most powerful image it could be? So it's real important to make those thoughts and those determinations as you're creating your work. You know, you're putting a lot of effort into this art making thing. Something we were I'm constantly striving to learn. I still learn. You know, here I am telling you how to do things, but I'm still learning every day. Either new media, new things I discover about working with the uh, watercolors, everything about it. If you're not learning, why are you keep painting? Okay, so now we'll switch to the greens. Also, I should mention, and you may have noticed just how brilliant these colors are. I really, really like these watercolors, and I'd always been hesitant to use watercolors because I always felt like they didn't have much oomph to them. They were not chromatically exciting, and um, and I've been using Winsor Newtons for a while. It was uh, content, maybe, sorta, but anyway. Um, I use Shiva paint sticks, which are made by this company, Richson Art. Um, RichsonArt.com, that's R-I-C-H-E-S-O-N.com. But they also make watercolors. And of course, those paint sticks I love because they are truly brilliant. Very simple palette that I work from. And um, they had, through, I'm sponsored by them, just so you know. Full disclosure they do provide me with my paint sticks and so I was starting and there was a possibility to actually be at the Giro d'Italia the Italian version of the Tour de France and I talked to them about it and they said oh well, we have these great watercolors let me send you some for you to try out and there are these these St. Petersburg watercolors and oh my god I had fallen in love with watercolor. Now these colors are so strong and beautiful. And also I always thought that you had to use the tube watercolors that look like oil paint on the little tubes, just squeeze them out on your palette. But these cakes clearly are vibrant, beautiful, easy to work with. You know, I'm just picking up a little bit of water, moving the color around have a nice mixing tray. This tray is how the paints come, or you can buy the individual cakes to replace because you never burn all of one color, all of your colors equally. If you do, every single painting looks chromatically identical. And where's the fun in that? So just finishing up the greens here. Trying to think if I've covered my little where to go, what to look at, what to ask for. So getting these final, getting a little bit more highlights. So getting this bright green again, come back and the sunlight bouncing off the trees. And the other thing about watercolors is you're it's a, a translucent media, so you're always thinking almost in reverse. So you notice when I drew the sides of the markers, the signs, the uh, banner across the road, that's all going to be white paper and I knew that going in, as is this jersey right here. I knew that was going to be white. So I'm painting everything but that and you can see how that's starting to bounce out as I lay the darker greens up underneath of it. And then the brush stroke is important. So I'm creating the leaves literally now just by tapping some of that darker green onto the surface. Now with the darker green already on my brush, let me pick up a little more. I'm gonna take a little of this vermilion, sort of deep lush purple, mix that into the green. That gives me this nice, beautiful black.
It's great for the wheels of the bikes, back of the head, the hair, various parts. And then that same color, just going to add more water to it, touch a blue to it, and that'll be my road color. And that's the fun almost always the final part of the painting. One of the reasons that's the last thing I do is because it's a lot of water and that'll behave differently and it'll take longer to dry. So if I get it into the painting too soon and then say try to paint this cyclist next to it, that color will bleed into the water so there's so many little idiosyncratic pieces you have to think about while you're building a watercolor. And the real thing about watercolors, you also have to be willing to be wrong and go, well, that didn't work. And there's no coming back. There's no, oh, well, I can just correct that. You have to be comfortable with not using the eraser part of your pencil if you're going to use watercolors. All right, so that's the piece. Hope you'll give it a like. Hope you'll become a subscriber, and I hope you'll check out the blog at theartofcycling.blogspot.com. Thanks for taking the time to look today.